Dudes and dudettes, how are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to What's the Damage, the good old WTD question mark here on my channel, you know? And I've got something on my lower lip, man. I think I cut myself or something. It's like, it's like a, a piece of skin or something. I don't know, it just doesn't come off and I don't want to rip it and start bleeding here. You know, that's going to be way too graphic for YouTube and the internet overall because the internet, as we know, has no violence at all. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to be talking about something that has actually been controversial in the world of gaming for a very long time and the, the media entertainment as a whole, you know, but I do believe that this is much more present in the world of gaming because this is where we see it shine a lot more, if I can use the expression shine because it is a little controversial probably to even say that, but anyway, the title already gave it away and my very very creative and awesome looking thumbnail that I hope came out a lot better than I've been thinking about how it's gonna look, you know, uh, before actually producing it. I'm gonna be talking about microtransactions within the gaming industry and how, in my opinion, they have, right now at the very least, completely and utterly decimated gaming as a whole, okay? Now, of course, the gaming market is still very, very strong and going very forward going very forward sounded weird it's still very strong and going forward today you know but in my opinion as an avid gamer myself it has highs and lows and it has ups and downs that are i think i literally just said the same thing highs and lows and ups and downs it has its pros and cons that is also the same thing what the hell is wrong with me today The gaming industry as a whole has seen quite a few highs and quite a few lows and right now, in my opinion, it seems to be going up but at the same time it's going down. It's almost like a little stalemate there at odds with itself, you know. It's trying to move forward but the, it itself is holding itself back, you know. Because a very long time ago, gaming used to be literally just playing video games for the fun of it, you know. Depending on the console that you had or even the PC, the earlier PCs actually had video games, you know. You would have to go out and buy a physical copy of the media that you wanted to play, you you know and you know put it in the console or the pc boot it up and just play you know if you wanted to play with your friends you could go couch co-op you know local multiplayer there was very little if any uh online playing at all you know that's what well you could i think you could always play online with the computers you know but at first they kind of suck but as it started to expand more and then the the playstation 2 got introduced to online broadband play and the xbox had xbox live you know that's how gamers started to play online with each other but the thing is that gaming always used to be about entertainment, you know? It would take you hours to complete a game to 100% or to unlock all of the skins, the weapons, the characters, the maps, you know? If we're talking about shooter games where you could where you could upgrade your characters with other stuff, you know? Or sports games where you, where you could play through a version of Ultimate Team and very slowly, meticulously, eventually grind your way to... Uh, no, you would slowly and meticulously grind your way towards eventually unlocking something really cool, which was really awesome, you know? The Gears of War games introduced that to us through the form of uh, medals, you know. You could uh, play the game relentlessly until you unlock Onyx medals, you know. So that was really cool. Games have always been very cool uh, in the sense of giving you accomplishments within the game. Even more, but, uh, when Xbox came out with achievements, which I talked about in this video here some time ago, talking about if achievements have gotten too easy, you know. It's the same concept, you know. They used to feel much more rewarding than today. And it's the same thing with completing games in general. You know, it used to feel much more rewarding back in the day, you know, back before the dreaded microtransactions came into play. Way back in the day, there was this term that we use called F2P, which is uh, free to play, right? And there was this other uh, nomenclature called P2P, which is pay to play, right? Uh, that actually applied more for online games like League of Legends, World of Warcraft, RuneScape, you know, which I myself played for many years, you know? So uh, there is now this kind of spin on that, which is called PTW, you know, or P2W, which is is pay to win right and that is what the microtransaction market is all about it's you paying with real money to get ahead in a game Now, let me make one thing abundantly clear here. I am not trying to throw shade at people who depend on microtransactions to enjoy a game, you know? If you have the financial, you know, uh, if you are in a financial position to be able to afford to buy the latest skins in, I don't know, Fortnite or Valorant or Destiny or Overwatch, if Overwatch is still a thing, I think it is. If you can afford to, Rogue Company, for example, Rocket League games where they offer a premium pass within the game for you to buy, you know? If you can afford to, hey, 
power to you, you know, do whatever the hell you want. If it makes you happy, that's fine. I myself have bought, you know, microtransactions in the past. I don't know if that's how you say it, buying microtransactions. I have spent microtransactions in the past, you know, but I, I think it was just once. When a few years ago I bought the Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, special edition pack, you know, it wasn't too cheap, but I could afford it at the time, so and it made me very happy, you know, because instead of grinding for hours and hours and hours and hours to get all of the the different uh, the different you know uh, clothes and costumes what were they called the the skins i guess for the characters no instead of doing that i prefer to unlock everything out of the gate because i am a huge star wars fan that was cool but in the back of my mind i thought man i could also have just grinded to get it you know there is somebody out there who has been playing this game for much longer than me and grinding out to get all of the skins you know so in that moment there i would have become what i criticized if i talked smack about people who who uh, like microtransactions right so the thing is that if you stop to think about it, it is a way for gamers to get an advantage over others, you know? But it doesn't make you a hardcore gamer to spend money on a game, you know? It actually kind of makes you just, I don't know, in my eyes, it doesn't really make you a bad or a good gamer. It just makes you a gamer with money, <laughs> you know? It makes you a gamer with a lack of patience, you know, who doesn't want to grind everything, you know, from start to finish to get that weapon or that map or that new character, you know? The very first uh, remake of Star Wars Battlefront for, the, for next gen, you know, for Xbox One and PlayStation 4 was so heavily criticized because of this, you know? Because you got the game right out of the gate with just a few characters to choose from, you know? And you could grind ride forever you know to unlock the other ones but you could also pay a handsome fee to unlock him right out of the gate you know which of course drew a lot of hate from the gamers who couldn't afford to or just didn't feel the need to you know i do believe that the sequel star wars battlefront 2 followed the same formula for a while but then later they eventually later they eventually corrected themselves you know they they actually gave people more i think it was battle passes or just made the characters available to unlock to regular progression you know so that's basically what it is man you know microtransactions are coming together now to kind of isolate two different communities of gamers within the same community you know because you have the gamers who are free to play and those who are pay to play you know i actually recently had a conversation with the gamer who is insanely pay to play you know she's very paid to win you know she even said suggested that I buy the premium pass in the game that we were playing together but it costs like 80 reais here in Brazil you know and I'm like okay right off the bat this girl is loaded okay she she probably you know whatever the hell she makes in her job I definitely make significantly less you know or she doesn't have the amount of bills that I have you know but she also has a lot of games where she has completed 100%, got the full 1,000 gamer score, you know? Games that normally would take ages for you to get the full 100%, you know? And when I started to dig a little deeper, I started to notice a pattern. A lot of the games that she completed to 100% have premium passes or in some degree have DLC that you can buy to boost yourself within the game or give you easier and faster gamer score, you know? Forza is a good example, you know? The new Forza Horizon 5 DLC came out, which is Hot Wheels. It's not free you have to buy it and she not only acquired it but got all of the achievements in like less than a week you know just a few days and i'm like there's something wrong with this you know there, there's something a little suspicious about this you know obviously she probably uh not even probably she obviously bought the in-game map to find the treasures you know the routes and buying uh maybe coins in game to give herself better cars modifications you know it the, it, the rabbit hole goes deeper and deeper but the point is that when you're paid to win I mean, do you really actually enjoy the game that you're playing to win in? And of course, there is the black sheep of the microtransaction family, sports games. This is the best and simultaneously the worst example of microtransactions utterly ruining an entire gaming community, you know? Because dude, oh my god, really? There's gonna be a buzzsaw construction noise now? Oh, thanks for stopping. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, guys. If you're not a fan of sports games, you know, then let me give you a basic rundown of how it is, you know. Right now, the sports gaming community, the sports gaming, um, how can I say, the sports gaming area is riddled to the bone with microtransactions, you know, especially within Ultimate Team. Ultimate Team is this thing where many sports games offer, you know, that pretty much allows you to create a roster of your own with the team, with the players that you want, the logos that you want, the team, the stadium, whatever the hell. You can pretty much make the dynasty of your dreams, you know. 
and now you can play through the game normally complete objectives and get coins that you can use to buy different items to make yourself a better you know but if you have enough money to do so in real life you can just skip over that and buy in-game currency so you can buy the things that you want a lot faster and easier you know so then when you're playing ultimate team you have an, a, a very uh, highly a very fully stocked team with the best players you know the best perks and power-ups or or bonuses whatever you know all because you paid for them instead of actually getting them in the game normally you know so and this happens with NHL uh, Madden FIFA NBA it's the same thing but NBA is different you know because oh my god I'm like I am one dog barking away from giving up on YouTube forever man Okay, so uh, NHL, Madden, FIFA, you know, and I think uh, I think MLB also. I've, I've played very little of the MLB games, but I think they have a, same, a similar format with Ultimate Team, you know. NBA 2K is different because it follows a different format. It has its own kind of Ultimate Team thing, which I believe is, uh, is my team. You know, it's just called my team in there, you know, where you make your own dynasty, you know. But microtransactions galore everywhere in these games, you know. And a long time ago, it didn't, it didn't used to be this way. You literally just bought the game disc, put it in, played the kickoff, you know, whatever, however you wanted to do it, you know. There was a... Uh there was also this other thing called career mode, you know, and then they started to introduce more intricate ones. Now there's an actual full, uh, an actual single player campaign in some games, you know, but essentially there is this channel that I like a lot called, I think it's Soft Drink TV, this, this one here where he does a deep dive on different sports franchises, you know, so all the ones that I mentioned, you know, and a few others as well. So you guys can go check that out later, but the sports gaming uh, world is so packed with microtransactions that on Honestly, it makes me feel nauseous sometimes, you know, but because I don't, uh, what the hell? Oh my god, the dog. Okay, like seriously, who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out today, man? Okay, so anyway, microtransactions all over the place, you know, with sports games, but it doesn't put me off at all because I am not a fan of Ultimate Team. The only time I will ever go into Ultimate Team is to get achievements related to that, you know, and career mode even less so. I'm not a fan at all. I literally just go straight to kickoff, you know, uh, an exhibition match, you know, because that's all that I, that's where I spend my time. I, when I buy a sports game, not buy, when I play a sports game, because I don't buy games, I have Xbox Game Pass, <laughs> hashtag not sponsored, but I wish, but, um, so whenever I boot up a sports game, I just want to play the game, you know? I don't want to explore too much of what it has to offer unless the, the other game modes are legitimately fun. Like in FIFA and NHL, where they do have different kind of uh, cool stuff, you know? But the point is that as the gaming industry starts to evolve, it seems like we're going back a few steps as well because EA, you know, is the best example of how, of how to not care about your community and just care about the money, you know? They love to put microtransactions everywhere and they are like the pioneers of loot boxes you know where you can buy boxes in the game that's going to give you a, a chance a possibility of getting a really cool and rare item that you can use against other players online or just for yourself you know and of course the more money you pay the better the loot box will be and the higher the outcome you know Gears of War 4 and Gears 5 were really good with this you know but I just grinded naturally through gameplay to unlock the stuff that I wanted you know I never buy anything in any of the Gears of War games and I don't think I ever will but still man it goes to show you that it starts to get frustrating, you know, it gets more and more frustrating. If you own a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5, then you can definitely afford microtransactions because you're paying for all of your games anyway, your, your physical copies, you know, because if you have an Xbox, you just sign up for Game Pass, you don't have to really buy any games, but that might give you that might make you have more money left over to spend on microtransactions, but that's on you, you know. I refuse to buy anything else, you know, unless it's directly through the Microsoft Store with my awards accumulated that I can exchange for money. But other than that, I really don't care, you know. Rocket League is one of my favorite games ever and one of the best games that I played since getting an Xbox One. And I have never bought a single thing in it, you know. Did not sign up for the premium pass because I think it's just stupid, you know. But I think that's it, guys. I don't know what else I can say about microtransactions uh, aside from the fact that I personally think that if they stay the way they are, we're going to face a, a, a very uh, we're going to face a very effective kind of like a, a recession. Let's say you know back into the gaming 
you know, recess, I don't know what the hell I'm saying, but if maybe a few gaming companies collectively came together to just maybe experiment and try going, I don't know, a, a year without microtransactions or release just one game, whether it's online or single player, you know, completely free of microtransactions where you literally don't even have the option to buy anything, you know? If you want that item there, you have to actually grind in the game, you know, to do what it requires you to do so you can unlock it and use it, you know? No shortcuts. You know, I just want to see if somebody can release one game like this just to see how the community will react and to separate the true grinders from the casuals. You know, there might be a few games that I have already tried this, but I don't know. I can't think of any right now. So there goes that uh, uh, example there. But yeah, man, like I said before, and I will say again, if you are paid to win, if you can afford to buy stuff in the game to give yourself an advantage, hey, that's cool, you know, but you really shouldn't brag about it, you know, because it's worse when you brag. Like, you can afford to buy a weapon that's going to give you an advantage over somebody who can't afford to buy, you know, and then you kill them with it and brag about, it, you know, that just makes you look like a douche, okay? So let's just chill, you know, I don't like playing online for this very reason. But anyway, guys, um, I'm gonna end it here because this is just a concept vlog, just me talking, it's getting a little bit longer than I expected, so that's it. Let me know in the comments below what your opinions are because I really wanna hear what you guys have to say about it, you know? And of course, if you happen to like this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also subscribe to my channel because I release videos every single day. And while you're at it, might as well hit the notification bell too to know exactly what time I upload. And that's it, guys. <sighs> I'm tired. This is Chazzy signing out for now, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Row the outro screen. Which, by the way, you don't have to pay for.